Welcome to All In for Estacada Schools. Joined by School Superintendent Ryan Carpenter, we'll be taking an in-depth look into the work, the data, the wins, and the fun that's happening every day in the Estacada School District. Hey, happy Monday and week number three to our Estacada School District community. My name is Ryan Carpenter and I so proudly serve as your superintendent. Welcome to the All In for Estacada Schools podcast. I'm so excited for our podcast today because we get to dive into the most important thing we do and that's teaching and learning. So buckle up, jump on your treadmill, hit the Peloton, turn on the oven, crank up the volume, and let's go all in for Estacada Schools. Hey, voice from above, ask me that question. If you could have any other job, what would it be? Well, I need to state first and foremost, I love my job. I was a born and raised uh, public educator ever since I was in the sixth grade. I knew that I wanted to be a high school social studies teacher. Unfortunately, I'm not that anymore, but just being a leader inside the public education setting has always been my dream job and I'm living it today. That being said, if I was not a public schools leader, the job I would love to have most would be a commercial airline pilot. For some reason, that looks like a ton of fun to me. Living life on the road, uh, hitting throttle on those big jets, and still being around people all while taking them to their important places. So if not a superintendent, definitely sign me up to become a pilot for Alaska, United, Delta, or American. One of those people sounds like fun. Hot Topics. So in the history of our All In podcast, we have had to place all of our focus and attention on safety protocols, back to school plans, and the multitude of complex changes occurring almost on a weekly basis. This week, we're going to have the conversation about readiness and how to know if your child is ready. The Estacada School District is redefining what ready is. Ready for college, ready for career, and ready for life. It's never too early to start preparing your children for life after high school. And today, I'm going to share with you how your school district is going to monitor your child's readiness and individualized actions that we will take to support them when they are not ready. So let's get started. So there's a lot of research nationally that has come out over the course of the last two years about trying to find the right performance indicators to help schools identify students who need different types of help. And I'm not talking about special education help, nor am I talking about data like standardized testing. Schools today are really trying to move away from a one-size test to judge all. The data is showing us that that is not making the direct impact that was originally desired when you talk about smarter balance testing and other standardized tests that kids throughout the United States of America test and take. So what the Estacada School District is feverishly trying to do is identify local measurements that we as a school district can determine in order to make sure that we're individualizing specific needs for that child as we make them ready for life after high school life after middle school, and life after their elementary school. So this year, the Estacada School District is trying to really focus on three specific measurements. The first is academic achievement. Now, one of the great things about your school district it is, is it is a 100% pure standards-based grading and learning school district. This is important for two reasons. The first reason is by being a standards-based grading school district, we can tell you exactly what your child is learning and areas where they're short. 
a lot of traditional grading school districts will be unable to accurately identify where gaps in learning exist because everything's averaged, everything's 60 out of 100, 80 out of 100. We're literally grading your child's learning outcomes standard by standard, target by target. And so as you look at what looks like a pretty complex report card and or uh, grade point average uh, on PowerSchool, this is where you can see the actual gaps of your child's learning. The second cool thing about being a standards-based grading district is we completely take behavior away from learning. And traditional, the way we grew up in grading, you know, hey, if I was just really nice to the teacher, uh, I might be able to get a little bit of a grade inflation bump at the end of it because I worked hard or was nice or was compliant inside the classroom. The problem with that traditional mindset of incorporating behavior into the overall grade is it doesn't actually tell me if I've met the minimum requirements to pass that class. And so traditionally, especially if people come from traditional grade schools, you know, here these kids get A's and B's in their classes because they're nice kids and turned in their homework, but at the end of the day, didn't really learn the essential skills. And as they move on from one school to the next or from high school to college, they typically fizzle out because they didn't actually have the core foundations of what it takes to be a successful college student or a successful career ready student because the most important things that matter inside each and every single class were candy coated or sugar coated um, just because these were nice kids who turned in homework on time. Gone are those days and I'm so happy that the Estacada School District really only focuses on individual student learning. Now do we report on behavior? Absolutely we do. We just report that separate from the most important thing a public ed education institution should do, and that's communicate to parents how their children are doing when it comes to learning. So the Estacada School District this year is really going to focus on three outcomes like I talked about. And I first started with... Uh, overall student achievement. So we're going to be identifying kids who are uh, passing or achieving 80% of their overall essential learning standards. If your child is passing 80% or more of their essential learning standards, that's telling our school district that your child is college ready, career ready, and life ready. And so as you monitor your own child's progress, be looking to see what's 80% and or more. Now at the end of the day, especially in high school, in order for them to pass a class, they need to be proficient in every single 100% of the essential learning standard. But as we look at and flag kids and try to help support them through intervention, tutoring, and other strategies, 80% is going to be our threshold, and you can join along with us in that as well. The other readiness indicator the Estacada School District is going to be focused on is attendance. Now, in order for kids to learn, they have to be at school. Now, for these COVID years, it's important to uh, define what at school is. At school can also mean at home on quarantine, remotely accessing their child's classes. Uh, it can be engaging in uh, their online activities if not allowed to be at school due to COVID safety reasons. So at school is important to determine here because it also could mean accessing the schools remotely which we'll obviously keep track of. But according to the research coming out of Harvard and Chicago and Brown and other very notable universities and institutions, any child that has less than an 80% attendance rate is at risk for not being college career and or life ready. And so as you come alongside us from a parent perspective, please help us by monitoring and keeping track of your child's overall attendance rate. This can be found on PowerSchool uh, and our, our employees and our district leadership team will be reviewing every kid's attendance rate week by week to make sure that anyone who slips under that 80% attendance indicator, 
that all of our resources are leveraged to support that child and their family as we try to get them to re-engage and access their learning. So I've given you two so far, 80% in overall student achievement, 80% in attendance, and the last 80% that we're going to be measuring this year, K-12, is 80% academic tenacity, or that's ultimately turning in uh, work or meeting learning benchmarks on time. Now, academic ten tenacity is the attitude that drives student achievement, such as perseverance and a growth mindset. So all year long, we have these homework assignments, these activities that help children meet those benchmarks of their learning goals. The Estacada School District is going to be keeping track of that, not to identify inside a letter grade uh, or an overall grade, but to identify of who might need some help in terms of intervention, who, who might be flagged as someone who could potentially be at risk. And so throughout this year, in your elementary, middle school, and high school, data is going to be collected on that academic tenacity. Again, tenacity is so critical in all of these categories, readiness categories I'm talking about. You've got to have built-in natural academic tenacity to be successful at a four-year college or a two-year college. You've got to have that tenacity in order to be successful in your career. And I mean that by starting at the ground level where everyone starts in their career and having that tenacity to make sure that deadlines and other types of accomplishments are being completed in order for those students to climb that career ladder. And then last but not least, that tenacity has to be available for a successful life and life readiness. And so what I'm sharing with you today is really more intentionally focused on how you as a parent can look at what the Estacada School District's data points are determining to see if your child is in fact ready or not. Now, I know that some families have college aspirations for their children. I know other families in our school districts have career aspirations for their children. And we all have life aspirations for each kid who walks inside our school district. So as we be more intentional about how your child is doing inside the Estacada School District and how the school district is communicating with families in terms of the success or lack of success of each child in our school district, we this year will be focused on 80% academic achievement, 80% attendance, and 80% academic tenacity. And that will help us determine readiness of each and every child in our school district from kindergarten all the way to the 12th grade. And so I encourage you, as you want to know, how is my child doing inside the Estacada School District? Well, are they passing 80% of their of their essential learning standards? Have they gone to school 80% of the time or more? And are they hitting their benchmarks of turning things in on time 80% of the time or more? If you can answer yes to all three of those questions, then your kid is exhibiting readiness uh, qualities. If you answer no to one, two, or three of those, then I would say your child is not on track and you can be assured that the Estacada School District has your child's name on a list where all of our resources from counseling, social emotional support, uh, intervention, both tier one, two tier and tier three strategies, and our special education department is working around the clock in an effort to get your child above those three indicators that I shared with you. So how can you pay attention to those readiness standards for your child? Well, first and foremost, it's important to understand that all of your child's learning and learning progress is housed in the PowerSchool 
app. And so make sure you download that app, make sure you're able to access PowerSchool and have your child's uh, information ready to sign in uh, so that you can regularly keep track uh, of your child's learning progress. Inside PowerSchool, you'll be able to already identify uh, the 80 in terms of academic achievement of essential learning standards and the 80% of student attendance. You also can take a look at your child's Canvas account, and this is where the exchange, the two-way exchange between student and teachers exists. So students can access assignments, submit assignments, and this is where that academic tenacity is mainly housed. And so your ability to have your child's access to Canvas and PowerSchool are the two essential things that you'll need to be able to monitor your own child's readiness as they go through the Estacada School District. If you need help accessing either of those two things, please contact your child's schools. We have great, great, great building secretaries who are ready to serve and support you. As we conclude our hot topics today, there are two statistics that I'd like to share with you in terms of readiness that is out just recently and it has national data implications uh, in connection with them. So check this out. If your child who is in the high school age range from ninth grade to 12th grade, if your child is attending school less than 80% of the time, they only have a 16% chance of graduating. How powerful is that? Any child right now, nationally, who is attending their neighborhood school 80% of the time or less has a 16% chance of graduating on time. Now you tell me how important attendance is to overall school achievement. And then the last stat I wanna share with you today, which I also think is important, is a child who has a high school GPA of 3.5 or higher, 92% of those kids with a 3.5 GPA or higher graduates from their school on time. 81% of those kids are enrolled in college and 75% of them make it all the way. So again, together, let's stay focused together on academic achievement, Let's stay focused together on attendance ratios, and let's stay focused together in cultivating that academic tenacity to support success for all of our kids. We are a village. It takes a team to accommodate such complex circumstances to ensure high outcomes for children. Are you a parent that we can count on as a teammate to help us as we have conversations about how to make each child ready, college ready, career ready, and life ready. Now I know there's a pandemic out there and I know that there's a lot of things that are gonna try to distract us as we go through this school year. But at the end of the day, the number one most important thing that we have to do with all children in the Estacada community is to make them ready. Help us build that strong foundation that regardless of the noise, regardless of the distractions, regardless of what type of school environment we're trying to build, that the Estacada School District always focuses on each kid and their outcomes as we strive to make them ready for life beyond the Estacada School District. What's in Ryan's inbox? Last week, I received 962 emails. I averaged 192 emails per day. And my average response time to those emails was 11 hours and 17 minutes. The number one theme inside my inbox this last week was children and outdoor face masks. Now I know, first of all, let's just camp on a second. How cool 
is it to be driving by our schools and see children playing together again? Like that alone is awesome. And I think we need to celebrate the fact that kids are back, kids are learning, kids are back with their friends at their neighborhood schools. Like that's a victory all to itself. And we're so pleased to be able to provide that service for our community again. Now, inside my emails, obviously, as people do drive by and notice so many kids at play out at the playground, they are noticing that children are not wearing face masks in general. And so that email conversation to me right now is more anger at how children are not wearing face masks and correlating that to an unsafe school experience. So I need to take a second to just communicate to all who are sending in this communication or are thinking about sending in this communication that the Estacada School District and all schools throughout the state of Oregon run on a different governing document other than what the county and or state health says. We operate our schools based on the Ready Schools Safe Learners Framework. We're legally obligated to follow these recommendations and requirements for this work. And inside the Ready Schools Safe Learners guidelines, face masks for children outside is optional. So I need to clarify first and foremost that face masks outside in the Estacada School District, it's not that we're saying they're not allowed. We're saying we're allowing families and children to make their own choice if they would like to wear a face covering when playing outside in recess, outside in PE, or in outside class times where teachers determine they wanna take their children outside uh, for outdoor learning and potentially a mask break. We are within the, within the right guidelines in order to make our face masks optional. And so by seeing kids out in the playground without face masks, the Estacada School District is not in violation of anything. In fact, we are in compliance with the guidelines. And so it's important to note that first. Now, I know a lot of our families and a lot of our citizens are very concerned about the spike both locally throughout the state of Oregon and nationally about the Delta variant. The Estacada School District is also concerned about that as well. We believe we have a good plan in place to mitigate that spread. Now we're gonna have quarantines. The Delta variant is going to enter our school space, but we have so many different safety protocols in place to uh, limit that spread and limit um, the potential for exposure. And our teachers and our employees do such a great job of educating our children, reminding our children, and continually uh, coming back to the conversation to make sure that all of our schools are as safe as they can possibly be as we try our best to focus on learning. But at the end of the day, what I need to communicate is I know for some, it's very hard to swallow to see kids without wearing a mask. And I understand you drawing that line and or correlation to no kid wearing a mask equals unsafe experience. But I'm here to tell you that at this moment, subject to change at any moment, the Oregon Health Authority, the CDC, and the Department of Education give all schools the right and opportunity to make face coverings optional for kids who are outdoors. And we're gonna continue to follow that Ready Schools Safe Learners guidance And if they someday remove face masks, we're gonna follow that. And if they require face masks, we too will follow that. So we're in compliance, we're following a document, and kids are gonna continue to have masks be optional to them if they are in an outdoor setting, subject to change. I hope that helps clarify and maybe relieve some of the anxiety. Uh, We're not going rogue here. We're following a very scripted safety plan. I also want to commend our students who have demonstrated very 
safe behaviors up to this point. Unfortunately, we can't currently have visitors coming into our schools, but if you were to walk inside the hallways right now, you would see kids very focused on keeping those face coverings going and following the rules, regardless of if they agree with it or not. Our, our students have been great team players in trying to prevent that spread uh, and take this work seriously. So they've done a great job. Fact or fiction. So here is one, and I quote, at least y'all, referring to Sandy School District, still have busing there. They, meaning Estacada, cut a bunch of school buses here in Estacada because the kids walk. So first and foremost, that is fake news. The Estacada School District has not made any reductions to buses, nor reductions to bus drivers at all, period. That never happened. In fact, we're right now trying to hire four additional bus drivers, and each and every single school year, we have made a financial carve-out to add two school buses to our fleet so that we can increase the amount of safe, drivable buses to transport our kids to and from school safely. Now, we are working with our community through the one mile radius circle and the one and a half mile radius circle. And I wanna talk a little bit more about that because again, this social media claim is outrageously false. So the federal government reimburses all school transportation 70% or 70 cents on the dollar, except any transport transportation that occurs inside one mile for elementary students and inside a mile and a half for secondary students. That's middle school and high school. So basically what the Estacada School District is doing and has done over the course of the last two years is actually try to go in compliance with the federal rules, like most school districts across the entire country. So really what the Estacada School District is doing is becoming more fiscally responsible and ensuring that we are capturing every single cent of that 70% reimbursement. Prior to the last couple of years, we have run two and sometimes three different bus routes inside that one mile and one mile and a half circle. The average bus driver costs the school district about $70,000 with full benefit expenses. The bus itself is an over $100,000 vehicle. So in essence, I could tell you as your superintendent that prior to the last couple of years, we were spending $400,000 of taxpayer money without any opportunity for reimbursement. Now that money could be better spent in different places, uh, particularly in the classroom. And so as we try to work out that opportunity um, for uh, us to capture and protect those dollars so they can better be supported in the classroom and to align ourselves with virtually every other single school in the United States of America, this has been a big movement for us. Now, I know that that has inconvenienced some families who used to be bus riders and are now walkers, but I actually need to give credit to the city of Estacada, who has invested themselves in connecting all of the sidewalks inside that one mile radius to make sure that all students inside that mile radius, like every other student inside the United States of America, and yes, I'm talking about downtown Portland, I'm talking about Gresham, I'm talking about San Francisco, everybody does this, and we do too. They have a safe route to their neighborhood school. The next factor fiction social media post uh, is also a fun fake news one. So, I quote, they, meaning public schools, I think, have always taught sex ed, but what they teaching them nowadays is a whole different thing than when I was in school. And they, meaning probably kids and parents, can't just opt out now, 
unquote. I would say the first part of that is probably true. We're probably teaching sex ed differently today than um, in the, I would assume, 70s or 80s. Uh, when this person was in school. That's probably true. Um, however, entirely and outrageously false. What I can tell you from a 100,000 foot level about sexual education inside the Estacada School District is really quite um, supportive of the local community's decisions. So about four years ago, the Estacada School District had a major committee when the state of Oregon released its new sexual education requirements. Inside those requirements required all local school districts to meet with local business owners, parents, faith-based organizations. And for the Estacada School District, we went through line by line every single one of those suggested topics on sex education in accordance with the state of Oregon's um, new guidelines. The Estacada School District cut a ton of stuff out to be more in line with its community and its values. From the pastoral community, community who was a part of this, from parents, from teachers, all of the above, we had so many voices at this table. And so if you're just reading the Oregon State of Oregon Education Sex Guidelines and are blindly assuming that, this, that the Estacada School District is going point by point through every single one of those, you are grossly false. That is not, in fact, what's occurring at all. And in fact, uh, all parents and all students have the right to opt out anytime they want to. Again, we truly do believe that it is the parents' responsibility to educate their children on their own values when it comes to sexual education. But you have to understand, to our, especially to our all-in podcast listeners, you have to understand that there are some homes and some families and some parents who are just either incapable of or not able to educate their children on some of these very important health topics. Therefore, the Estacada School District does have these conversations with all students, but rest assured when it comes to sexual education, the Estacada School District offers a curriculum that is in alignment with our community, backed by a very, very strong, extensive committee work that occurred four years ago inside our own community. And if you don't want your child to be a part of that curriculum, you can very simply opt out. It's that simple. As we take a look at these fact or fiction statements, I think it's important to encourage our community, particularly those that are closely associated with or in a partnership with the district, to collaborate with us. Bring your questions to us. Have conversations with us. We will always welcome an open and honest conversation based in fact on what is actually occurring in our schools. By doing this, we can encourage dialogue that improves and progresses our community instead of dividing it and misinforming it. Hey, it sure was fun to actually talk about teaching and learning in your child's readiness as we engage in the beginning of the school year. We're three weeks into school now, and it's, it's time to start looking at your child's attendance. It's time to start looking at their achievements as our, as our teachers are introducing really unit one, K-12, throughout our organization. And again, we all have a responsibility in making sure all kids are life ready. So. Uh, I just challenge you as, you as you start to think about your child and their academic achievement, are they ready? Uh, and it's our responsibility to continue to communicate that. So uh, hopefully this, this podcast was uh, helpful and informative as we talk about how we're going to approach our kids uh, and helping determine if they're ready or not ready. Uh, so we can continue to close those gaps. The Estacada School District just continues to boom. Our enrollment continues to grow, and we're working through these growing pains together. This is a great time to be raising your child inside the Estacada School District. Have a great week, and we'll see you in the next one.